So in this video, we're going to talk about why it's always, always, always important to stand up for yourself, no matter what situation you're in. So tune in. everybody to another episode of Grow With Me, Sawyer P, where we grow together, not apart. And in this episode, we're talking, like I had said, about um, why you should always stand up for yourself. But before I jump into the video, in the subject matter of the video, I just wanted to briefly um, just do the quick spiel that most YouTubers, content creators do. Um, if you enjoy this comment, or blah, blah, if you enjoy this content, please consider liking, subscribing, clicking the notification bell for uh, updates on new content that is uploaded, um, sharing the video, commenting, any of those things that you do will help the YouTube algorithm pick up my video and suggest it to others. And that, as, as a content creator, that helps me, that motivates me to want to create more content. Um, to want to keep pumping out content for you guys to enjoy and hopefully find value or entertainment value or information or education of some type uh, from these videos so I uh, really hope you guys enjoy them <clears throat> and if you did that for me you know I'm helping you guys by trying to give you all good content that's how y'all can return the favor if that's uh, hopefully that's not asking for too much but um so thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm um, up to almost 300 subscribers now, which I'm kind of surprised like that I've made it that far. <laughs> um, it makes me feel good that people want to that take interest in what I have to say about the prison system and uh, reforming your life and recovery from addictions and all these different subjects that I touch upon. And in this one, um, like I said, we're going to talk about why it's important to always stand up for yourself. So. And I'll tell a little bit about my story in this, um, what that looked like for me. So I will just go ahead um, and hop on right in. And, and I will just say this also in the description. Uh, you all, you always will see like a brief description of the video, like what it's about. But you can also find my social media information on there, my Instagram, um, my TikTok. I have a TikTok. Um, you know, cash app and Venmo, if you're feeling generous, you don't have to do that, but they are there. If it's something that uh, would make you feel good, you know, um, by no means you have to do that. I'm not asking for handouts, but if it's something you, you would enjoy to do, that it's there. I just put it there for that reason. So, um, so anyways, why you should always stand up for yourself. And I'll talk about how, what this looked like for me, how this how this became a serious thing to me and how it used to be and what changed, why it changed and everything, everything that had happened around that. So, so when I first got incarcerated, my very first time I ever, ever got locked up, I was 17, white kid, kind of from a more suburban type area, um, a mostly white town. Um, I hung around like skateboarders, uh, some athletes, you know, I did a little bit of sports myself. Played like um, played roller hockey for a league, and I played um, like pee wee football, like youth football. I don't know if it's called pee wee football, but like youth league football. And um, in high school, I was kind of too busy partying and messing around to take sports and athletics serious. Um, I was too busy like running around, partying, getting high, doing all those stupid things. So I kind of wasted that time in high school doing things that wasn't productive. But um, anyways, so my first time I got locked up, I was 17, I got bailed out right away, but um, I ended up entering it, um, that was for my burglary charge, and I actually ended up getting a possession charge as well a few months later, and I ended up getting all of that put in the drug court. And when you're in drug court, there's certain things you can't do, they drug test you regularly uh, for all types of different substances, weed, cocaine, opiates. PCP, you name it, everything, you know, just about, I mean, most of the most popular drugs anyway. And, you know, you have a curfew, you have to finish graduating high school or getting a GED if you don't have either of them. There's certain things you have to do to complete the program. And initially, um, in drug court, I got sanctioned a few times for dirty urines. Um, 
one time I got caught trying to sneak in fake urine taped to my leg and like an empty squeeze, like almost like an Elmer's glue bottle that had been cleaned out really good. Um, you know, I like Elmer's glue, like at school that you squeeze it and it comes out of that little narrow tip. I think I had, I had someone else's pee that was clean in that and tried using that in my, when I went to drug court one day and they caught me. Uh, I thought I was being sneaky and I was going to get over on them. And when they tested it, the temperature was too low on it. And I didn't know they took the temperature of it. So they made me take it again. But when they made me take it again, the first time I got away with that, I handed it to them. And they didn't catch me putting it in the cup the first time. It was only the second time when I went back, they kind of patted me down and they found me. So I got sanctioned. They gave me a three-week sanction for that. And that was my first experience of actually sitting in jail for a little bit of time you know the prior two times I got bailed out right away like within a few hours um, actually no the second one I sat for like two days maybe I might have sat for like two nights there which you know I was like it wasn't a big deal I think I was in like an isolation cell the whole time but anyways the third time I went back for three weeks I was in a youth block uh, there was some a couple Native American kids that kind of like ran the block they're pretty good sized dudes um, for their age you know these are like 16 to 18 year olds on there and uh, they had some size they had already done time upstate oddly enough which is crazy and they've been in like group homes and um i think it's called dfy detention for youth it's like the prison for youths i never went through dfy but some of those guys did so they already kind of had under had an understanding of how jail operates how it works some of them were crib there were a lot of black guys and i was literally the only white guy on the block there was one other white kid, he was tall, but like, you know, he had some size to him, so he was kind of respected. They left him alone, but I was small. I didn't know nothing. I was green and dumb as they come when it came to how prison worked. I had no clue, no clue how it worked. And, uh, you know, there were some bullies in there. You know, there was some time I got commissary stolen from me. People had said disrespectful things to me, called me names, you know, called me outside my name. I'm not going to say specifically what was said, but just some, some pretty disrespectful stuff. And... I felt like I was outnumbered heavily, so I, I felt like if I fought, I was just going to get destroyed, you know, just destroyed, because I automatically had a target on my back because I was the only white guy in there, you know. <clears throat> and unfortunately, there is prejudicing in the prison system. It still happens to this day, especially in states like California. It's very segregated. Um, but even, you know, in the East Coast, like, a lot of time, a lot of blacks hang out with mostly blacks, a lot of whites hang out with mostly whites, Hispanics exp with Hispanics, and so on. But, um, <clears throat> so, you know, there's a few times I've been disrespected, kind of picked on a few times. My commissary got stolen from me when I went to, um, I think I'd went to like a church program. It was either a church program or I went to school. I was just trying to pass the time better. So I went to the school there, even though I'd already graduated or no, I was about to graduate. They had me, no, that's what they did. They had me do my schoolwork while I was in there. And, um, that first time it kind of really hurt my pride, you know? kind of hurt my pride because I knew I should have been standing up for myself, but I was kind of scared. I was heavily outnumbered. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I knew how to fight good. No one ever really taught me how to fight. Like, I, I'd play fought with friends and wrestled and stuff, but I didn't know how to, like, for real fight, you know. And I'm not claiming to be, like, Billy Badass today, you know, by any means, but I do feel pretty confident that I can stand up for myself to a decent ability. So there's always going to be someone that can beat you. I don't care who you are. Even Mike Tyson lost fights, like everyone. There's someone out there that's always going to be able to beat you, you know. There's always going to be someone that, that you mismatched. They might be really strong where you are weak. Say you're a bad wrestler, they might get you on the ground and ground and pound you, you know. If, say you're bad with their hands, they're good with their hands, they might stand up and beat you, you know. But my, my way of fighting is to try to always attack people's weaknesses. Find a hole wherever they're weak at and exploit that weakness, you know. But anyways, I learned that later on in life. So, you know, I end up doing that three-week sanction. I get out. My, my pride and self-esteem's hurt because all those things that had happened. I'd been called horrible names in there, kind of punked out, stuff stolen from me. I didn't know what to do. And I was like, you know, I can't ever go back to jail. It's not for me, you know, which I did. I went going back many, 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 many more times after that. But, um, so I'll kind of fast forward to when everything changed. The first few times I went to jail, I kind of like, if someone was disrespectful to me, I kind of ran my mouth. I would like just be disrespectful back, and there was times where, you know, 
I kind of thought sometimes, sometimes the people got better of me, um, or you know, whatever, just you know, try to embarrass you or make you look bad in front of people and stuff. But I was dumb for running my mouth, you know what I mean? You don't run your mouth, especially if you can't back it up, you know. So, as time went along, um, it's actually one of my older videos, the video of uh, Crazy White Boys Try Jumping Me in Kentucky Jail. Um, it's one of my older videos, if you scroll through my videos, I think I only have like 20, so it shouldn't be hard to find on my YouTube page. Um, you shouldn't have a problem finding it, but that's, that's when everything changed when that happened. Um, I basically, I had stuff stolen from me while I was in the shower. Um, I knew that was a make or break moment. I, I said, I, you know, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I got to start standing up for myself every single time. And I, at that point, I learned more about fighting. I practiced more. I wrestled more. I, you know, I watched MMA and UFC to learn things. I'd been in fights since then. So I had some experience. And uh, when I got out of the shower and I realized stuff had been stolen from me, I said, whoever the individual was that stole my stuff is a weak hearted whore. Or I, or I said their mom's a whore or something like that. You know, that's how you... That's how you go about getting your... You know, if you want to call out the person that did it, they have to... And there, they have to respond. If you call someone like a bitch, a whore, or like things of that nature, they have to respond, or else they're a punk. So that's why I did that. I knew like if I couldn't find out by investigating who it was, then if they didn't respond to that and fight me, they were a straight punk, and no one was going to respect them. So you know, one person stepped forward that was part of stealing. There's two people that stole from me. One of the two did. The other one didn't do anything. And a few other people like. For whatever reason, I wasn't from that town. I wasn't from that area. Um, I'm from New York. So a lot of the time they don't like outsiders. So a few other people kind of started running their mouths, trying to get involved, like they were going to jump me. And I ended up having to, but fortunately there was a guy there that took my back. He had my back. Uh, Mark Seals, his name was. He um, he kind of stood up for me and made sure it was fair one-on-ones every time. Like I might have to fight all of them, but they're going to be fair one-on-one -on -one fights, you know. Even if I had to fight all five of them back to back, but eventually, you know, so I did. I fought two of them back to back. I did pretty good in both of those fights, you know. Um, I didn't get hit. One did slam me pretty hard to the ground, but I did light them both up pretty good. They're bleeding and swollen and stuff, and but I got slammed once really hard and it hurt. But outside of that, I did pretty good. I felt like in that fight, those fights, those two fights. But um, the COs eventually came, broke it up, put us in the hole. I'm just giving you a quick rundown of what happened because you can go watch that story if you want the details of it. But um, anyways, when I was in the hole, they put us in a hole for a week. There's nothing in there. You get a mat, a blanket, and nothing else. Four walls and a toilet. Like nothing. Not even sheets for your blanket. You can't have a Bible. If you're in there for more than a week, they'll give you a Bible. Um, the only thing you can see is if you get letters from your family, they'll let you read the letter, then you got to give it back. You can't have no commissary. You get three trays a day. There's no television, nothing. You are literally staring at the wall, literally. So I had a whole week in there to think about the situation. And when you're in there, you are allowed to go to commissary and order commissary items, but it's only hygiene, like um, non-food products. You can't buy any kind of food products, you know, or entertainment type stuff. But, you know, there's, they didn't sell radios and stuff like that there. But they sold shoes there. So I was in there, I was like, okay, I see what type of jail I'm in, what type of environment I'm in. They don't like outsiders, so I bought shoes. I bought shoes off a commissary. And they're like the Jackie Chan shoes that you just slip on. But as soon as I came back to the dorm, just having those on and wearing those, you get, you get more respect immediately. Because you know, the moment you wake up, you put them on, that shows you're ready at all times. You will fight. And a lot of people will try you if they don't think you're going to fight, but... You know, it kind of sends a message without saying anything, you know. And me wearing those shoes, I was ready to go. At that point, I don't care who it was, bigger, stronger, smaller, fatter, whatever. You know, I, I was going to fight them if I had to. Of course, I don't go picking fights, start in trouble. But I'm more the type to defend myself, stay up for myself if need be. So, you know, long story short, I had words with a few people after that. But, you know, a lot of times those guys... So I didn't mention this as well. The jail, they only give you like flip-flops, but they're not even like these. 
I guess this is what I'm wearing. Sorry, this one's like broke, but they're like cheap styrofoam almost looking. They're so cheap and you slip all over the place if you have to fight someone. So having those shoes give you a definite edge over everybody, you know? Here's, a, here's the better one. This one's not all beat up like the other one. But anyways, they're kind of like that, but not exactly. They're more like foamy, real cheap. They break super easy. They're like thong strap ones that go between your toes. Um, and so having those gave me kind of an edge. It showed I was serious. I was willing to fight, and it sent a message, you know. And after that, um, I had words with a couple people, but nothing ever, you know, when it came down, I said, so what do you want to do about it? Like, it never went anywhere, you know. And I took that experience, and I walked away from there and told myself, never again. You know, never again is someone to punk me, disrespect, you know, like, someone might try to disrespect me, but I'm always going to deal with it. I'm always going to step up and deal with it. And I'm not claiming that we should all act like Billy Badass or a tough guy, because that's not right, you know, like, to, to try to, like, you know, say you're a big dude and you don't want to come off as a bully and throw your weight around and try to intimidate everyone. But when the situation calls for it, I'm the type of person that you should always stand up for yourself, stand up for people you love, stand up for your family, your friends. Um, I'm really big on that. I'm kind of an altruistic person. Altruistic meaning I care about people a lot and other people's well-being and other people's success. Um, so I'm really big on defending people I care about, but like innocent people, children, women, stuff like that. Um, it's kind of became more of my character as I've matured and grown older. But, um, you know, I, I'm just here to say, like, always be ready, you know, to, to stand up for yourself. Um, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. Of course, you can't beat up a gun. You can't beat up a knife. There's situations where you might have to walk away. And out here in the free world, it's better to walk away. If you're in the free world, walk away. If you can, if you're able to, without getting hurt, just leave. We have that freedom to do, like, this is a free world. There's no fence around here. There's no wall or barbed wire or razor wire. You can leave, but in that jail environment, God forbid you ever have to go there, always, always, always stick up for yourself. Because if you do not, you will become a target. You will be viewed as weak. You will become preyed upon. People will view you as food in a way, and it won't go well for you. And many bad things can happen to you. You can be, you know, abused physically, sexually, stolen from, um, literally tortured and tormented by people every day, which doing time's already hard as it is. It's not fun to sit in a cell. It's extremely hard and it's stressful and depressing. It's no fun at all. So if you ever find yourself in there, be ready to go. Be ready to go. There's no saying, um, um, You know, train, train to go, not for show, like for working out. That's a big thing I'm big about, like working out, train, train to go, train to go with these, not for show, like six pack or whatever, you know, which you can do both, but, um, or, you know, you have heard of like Kodak Black saying videos and other people say, you know, stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. That's a big why I like to work out. You know, I like to stay in shape so I can always be ready to go if I need to, even out here in the free world, God forbid, hopefully I don't ever have to do that out here, but. And there, you, that's why so many people work out. You're in a dangerous environment around dangerous men that do bad things, that are thieves, that are rapists, that are murderers, that are uh, extortioners and uh, con artists. You know, the best of the best are in there, you know. I mean, I can't say the best because they got caught, but the, a lot of them are good at what they do. They just happen to get caught. Eventually, you're going to get caught, you know. It's just a matter of time if you break the law every day, you know. But, um... You know, if you're someone that's getting ready to do a bid and you're watching this video, you're waiting to get sentenced, you're out on, out on bail or bond, prepare yourself. Start lifting now. Start doing push-ups, pull-ups, dips, air squats, lunges, run. Usually the guy that has the most wind, cardiovascularly, like, <gasps> you, you see guys fight for 30 seconds to a minute and they're so out of breath. The guy that usually went, you usually think it's the big, jack, strong dude that's just powerful. If he catches you quick, you're probably, he's probably going to whoop you. But a lot of the time, it's the guy that's got more wins. And sometimes that's the smaller guy. Whoever can go longer. Unless they knock you out quick and hurt you quickly, if it goes the distance, it's the guy with the cardio that wins. You know, the only time it, the big, strong guy wins is if, you know, 
Well, they do win a lot of the time. They can just dominate you completely immediately. But if you can get past those first few uh, uh, um, advances of their attacks and stretch the fight out, you, there's a good chance you'll win. If you can avoid those first few punches or them wrapping you up, slamming you to the ground, getting on top of you and pummeling you, you can win. You can win. You just have to, your defense game has to be good. You got to be ready, you know. But um, and I'm not claiming to be like a dojo or a BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like a uh, master or anything. But I do know a thing or two about fighting, and I've seen a lot, and I've been in a lot of them. And um, it's uh, it's necessary. It's a necessary evil in jail. People, some people only respect violence. They don't respect words. Some people aren't diplomatic and don't want to talk things out. Um, the only way they want us to resolve it is with ease or with a knife, you know. So, you know, sometimes you got to pick and choose your battles, too. Um, you know, if there's a lot of numbers against you, you know, if you start, you know, if, if you start beef, say, with a gang member, that's, a, that's something you got to be careful about because you might have that whole gang coming at you if you fight that one member. You know what I mean? Because they, they're they supposed to all have each other's back. So if you fight, you know, a way to handle that is to talk to, like, the big homie, you know, and get a permission to have a one-on-one -on -one with that individual first before just going ahead and fighting him without talking to the big homie. The big homie's like the the shot collar main dude of that game. But um, even if, if you don't even want to go to the shot collar, the big homie or whatever, um... Make sure you got backing them. If you know it's a gang member, make sure you got people and some numbers behind you, because that can end really, really bad for you. You're either gonna get hurt or sign in the PC. If it's a bunch of guys versus just you, you're gonna get hurt badly. Taken off the yard and either a uh, mercy flight, uh, get carried off by some COs or maybe out in a casket, just depending on how all that goes. You know, so. Um, you got to be really careful about those situations and handle them a certain way. But, um, yeah, I'm just here to say, you know, stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. Um, build yourself up in good ways, mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, stay around people that love you. Be careful who you open the door to. Be careful who you open the door to in there. Because once you open a door to someone, say, say the guy in the, the cell next to you, he doesn't have much money. I'll give you this example before I end this video. Say he doesn't get much money from family, so he can't order commissary. The only food he gets is what comes in on the food trays um, from the mess hall, you know? That's how he survives. And you might have a little hustle. Maybe some guys tattoo, some guys sew stuff for people, some guys fix radios, some guys steal food from the mess hall and sell it. But, um, you know, some people only survive off mess hall food and their little hustle, and sometimes their little hustle doesn't make them much, you know, it just depends on what they're doing. Tattoo guys usually do well. Guys that run, like, parlay tickets and stuff with gambling usually do well. Or, like, the poker table, it just depends, you know, but... But, for instance, the guy in the cell next to you, say he's broke, but you have tons of stuff. Your family supports you, you get $100 a week to spend on food, that's, that goes a long way in there. You can get a lot of stuff with that. You're well taken care of. You got all your shoes, your radio, your jacket, like sweaters and stuff that you can get in sent from the outside, nice stuff. A lot of food, coffee, cigarettes, whatever. The first time you share with that neighbor, that broke guy, you've opened the door to him to ask you for more thereafter. So you have to be very careful with that because once you open that door and allow someone into your life and allow them to eat with you or share with them, a lot of time they're going to come back. And a lot of time they only come back when they need something. They'll butter you up with kindness and, you know, they'll try to be nice to you or do you a real small favor. I call it uh, give a penny, take a dime. They might do you a small favor like, uh, I don't know, maybe they'll, whatever, they'll bring you some bread back from the mess hall for sandwiches. But then they want to pouch of tobacco from you for doing it. You know what I mean? People try to take advantage of you like that. It's not like a fair trade, you know? So, and when you try to close that door and you say, listen, dude, I'm not giving you nothing anymore. Some people are very entitled and they get upset. They feel entitled to your stuff once you open that door. So, when you go to close it, they put their foot in the door so you can't close it. And then a lot of time that turns into bang, 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 bang. You know, so you got to be very mindful of that very mindful and cautious of that because it's a big deal um so yeah always stand up for yourself always watch your surroundings be aware of what's going on around you 
careful who you associate with because not everyone has good motives. Um, not everyone wants to, to, to truly is sincere in their motives. So uh, just be, you have to be very cautious, you know. But um, I, I know this was a short, little bit of a shorter video than my usual. Well, it's 25 minutes. That's decently long. But I hope you all took some value away from this. I haven't uploaded in a while and I got to get back on it. I apologize. I want to keep these subs, com subscribers coming in and my watch time going up. I just want to say I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Grow with me, Sawyer P, where we grow together, not apart. Hope you all have a good weekend. Peace.